let's go ahead and talk about observe and report and what that means for particularly unarmed security officers, right? Now, for security companies, why do we employ observe and report roles? A lot of people have this idea that security officers must act in some type of proactive physical intervention way. Well, security companies will employ observe and report officers, particularly because of lack of or liability issues, right? We are telling the client, hey, look, we are there to observe and report the issue, but we are not going to physically intervene. And typically, a client will say, hey, look, that standard operating procedure is okay because we are employing these guards at a reduced cost, right? So with liability comes, or with more liability comes increased costs. And typically, we employ armed officers or equipped officers with less lethals. And we are saying, okay, we are willing to take on the added liability for added costs to the contract. And we do this through, hey, look, our officers are trained with self-defense measures. They are trained with the use of force continuum, maybe some legal knowledge as well in terms of basic uh, penal codes, uh, such as trespass violations, you know, uh, those basic concepts, petty theft violations, you know, burglary when we start getting into felony. So let's go ahead and talk about some scenarios here, okay? A big one is uh, vandalism. People have this idea that you must stop the person from breaking property, right? So let's say you have some climate protesters that show up with spray paint and they start spray painting the, the front or defacing the front of a commercial complex you're working in. It is not your job as an observe and report officer to physically stop them from doing that. It's your job to call law enforcement and report the issue to the client, right? So you're gonna maintain a presence there to observe what they're doing, but you're not going to physically intervene, all right? And I actually spoke to some officers recently, security officers, and we were playing this scenario uh, and they had this idea that they needed to do something, physically stop them from doing something. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's a law enforcement officer's job. You need to communicate what they're doing, all right? As long as they don't pose a danger to yourself, you know, no one's taking away self-defense from you. So you could have climate protesters, you could have uh, somebody who is displeased with the services. You know, they're demanding to speak to somebody and they won't leave, right? Okay, call law enforcement. You know, when your observer report role is to provide a visual deterrence, and then you're going to, when that visual deterrence is not working, when you're telling them you need to leave the property and they are passively saying no, the physical removal and arrest, right? You've given them a trespass advisement. You're telling them, we don't want you here. You need to leave. I am trespassing you from this property. You are not allowed to return the physical removal becomes the responsibility of a police officer. And they typically do that through arrest, right? They will come and say, these people don't want you here. You need to leave. If you don't leave, I'm going to arrest you. That is now the police officer's role. He's taking on the, the liability, et cetera. And he's going to go physically hands-on with the person. Now, to ramp this up, what happens if you have somebody who enters, um, let's say your guard shack, right? They're drunk and they start ripping up the place. They're screaming, yelling, uh, but they don't touch you at all. 
and your job there is to observe from a safe distance, right? Notify law enforcement, take the steps you need to ensure your own personal safety and continue observing the person. So our, our responsibility is uh, not only our own safety and client safety, keep people away from the person who, you know, ex excuse me, please don't go in there. You know, the, we have a person who's exhibiting odd behavior <laughs> and just ensure that people stay away from the individual, observe from a safe distance and allow law enforcement to go in there and make their arrest, okay? Now, if somebody is, this is where it becomes obvious where self-defense really comes into play. If somebody comes up to you and you're there and they start yelling and screaming at you and then they, you know, present themselves a fighting stance and they start, you know, throwing a punch, you are allowed to defend yourself. That's key. Nothing about observe and report takes away self-defense. There are things that are going to potentially pop up that you're going to have to make a moral decision, right? And typically when it comes to a self-defense policy, it's when you are a observe and report policy, it's up to termination. Right Where you're going to break that policy is when you see, let's say, two people get in a fight. There, you're a hotel security officer, and you're an observer report officer, and you have two people coming out of your restaurant, which is a lease property outside of the ownership of the hotel. So you're employed by the hotel, and you have a restaurant that leases a space in the lobby or it's adjacent to the lobby, okay? And there's a bar there. And two patrons start engaging in mutual combat with each other and you try to physically break it up, right? Are you in violation of your observe and report role? Yes, absolutely you are. Now you are patrolling your commercial complex. It's an office building and you observe two teenagers and they are on property, but they are not, you know, they're not your client's employees. They are simply walking through and a 15 year old girl starts screaming for help. And the male is observed grabbing her and throwing her to the ground. And she's screaming for help. And he starts to pull off her clothes. Do you have a moral obligation to intervene? Yeah. I mean, most of us are going to say that even though it's outside the scope of our job to intervene, will we? And it's the totality of circumstance there that, you know, a lot of us are willing to risk the job to help uh, the innocent out there. And that's where you're going to have to accept the fact that, you know, the totality of circumstance may save your job or cost you your job and you are morally, um, you know, your moral convictions are going to force you to act or you are going to feel compelled to act, okay? And time may be the key factor there. Even though you've reported law enforcement to respond, are you going to watch a young 15-year-old girl get raped? And that's where you're going to have to, you know, live with your own decisions, okay? Now, that's an extreme example, but is it possible? Yeah, it is. Guys, the fact we are patrolling a, a property means that we're going to be hyper aware of what's going on. Um, we may not notice everything, but we're going to be more aware of what's going on on that property than the average person. 
So I want you to keep this in the back of your mind. When we start talking about observer report, self-defense, and, uh, you know, the difference between mutual combat or um, scenarios that involve serious bodily injury, sexual assault being one, and somebody presenting a lethal threat, right? And the, the difference between, okay, strict policy versus moral uh, obligations to act. And part of that will be in how you're, if you're terminated or not, will be the totality of circumstance. And your security supervisors are going to be, you know, what our insurance covers. You know, are you covered liability wise? And that will depend on the policy. That will depend on what your post orders say, such as medical intervention. Are you trained to perform CPR? Are you trained to, you know, if you're patrolling an apartment complex, are your duty do they do your duties extend to uh, lifeguard duties? Even though they don't typically, right? Are you gonna let a four year old who's at the bottom of the pool stay there? because you're not a lifeguard. You know, those are gonna have to be questions you ask yourself and I hope you say no. <laughs> I'm, you know, that's pretty much a common sense. Are you going to jump in the pool if no one else is there, you know, to save that four-year-old who's in the middle of drowning, right? or you gotta wait the four to six minutes for a law enforcement officer to respond. I would say <laughs> the answer should be obvious to you. You're gonna jump in the pool and grab that child and you know start performing life-saving measures. And one of the basics is grabbing her and removing them from water. All right, guys, if you have any comments about observe and report roles, let me know.